Okay, today we are playing a game on Havana. We are in the Silver SR range and we will be playing Mercy the entire way through. So, before we start, so we're playing Mercy. So here's a good thing to do when you're playing Mercy right at the start of the game, right? You decide who you're gonna wanna spend most of your time tethered to. Because of course, we're trying to damage boost people as much as we can. So, we've got Bridget as the other healer. This may or may not upset us, depending on how bad the Bridget is. If Bridget's good, she can put out enough healing where we can spend a lot of time damage boosting, but most Bridget players are not good. So we got no long, we got no obvious damage boost target, because we don't have like an Ash, Widow, Hanzo, anything like that. So, instead we go, alright, well who's the next best one we got after that? It's pretty much May, because the Icicle doesn't have fall off damage, which means that she gets to like plug people. How many times have you been killed? Like 20 miles away by the May who just like beamed you right in the skull. May's icicles are pretty good. And Reaper, if he gets in there, he's good, but you don't usually want to follow Reaper as Mercy because Reapers will very frequently betray you. So we've got May, and then Roadhog's pretty good as well as like the other one, especially if he hooks somebody. Then you change, then you know, you damage boost that Roadhog. So we've got, like, the two good people to damage boost. Maybe Reaper, depending on, like, the position we're in and how much we trust him. Because, uh, that's what you do with Mercy. You try and damage boost people as much as you can. That's the game we play when we're playing Mercy. So, um, attacking first. Uh, elevator music was playing in my head. I apologize. Could have been damage boosting May very briefly in there. Uh, so they've lost their main tank and one of their healers immediately, which is a bad start for them, to say the least. Reaper's going in, we stepped on a trap, didn't see the trap, unfortunate, you know. Uh, a lot of people are on fire. This is also inconvenient, could be damage boosting right there, very briefly, I know, but we could have been damage boosting, could be damage boosting right now. We look, we look for all the little bits, um, could be damage boosting right there. Bridge is not exactly a good one to be damage boosting usually, but I mean, you just want to be damage boosting somebody if you can be, you know. It doesn't matter if they're ideal, if like, you've got nobody else right now, damage boost them. So we've almost got Valkyrie built up, so we're going over now to heal this Roadhog, but May also just took damage. Roadhog is in a significantly safer position. Roadhog is also just like pretty low priority as far as healing the guy goes, because He's big, he's beefy, he's gonna take a breather, you know? Uh, whereas May, not as beefy, still survivable, obviously, but her losing, like, half her health is way worse than Roadhog losing half of his health. So, we're using Valkyrie now. They don't have any ultimates we have to worry about positioning-wise, so we can just kind of do whatever. They don't have a dead eye, they don't have attack visor, so we don't have to worry about hiding. Going over to try and heal the Rhine, it's like not even worth the attempt at that point. That guy's put himself in a position where it's like impossible for him to get it, for us to get him out of that position. Um, so we end up just being further forward than we'd like to be suddenly. So we're going around here to try and get to the Reaper. I don't really want to do this because I've already pretty much decided this team fight's not looking good. I don't really like going into Reaper players very often. Um, it end, we don't end up getting got, so it's fine, but I don't like to go to Reapers, they're not trustworthy people. Flankers in general are not very trustworthy people. So, uh, Zari is after us, but she's low energy, so it wasn't super scary, she didn't get us. Uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan's gonna charge in, so we just heard Rip Tire, by the way. Just hide when you hear Rip Tire. Just like, break the tire, like, this is when he Rip Tired. Just break the tether and hide, because we don't want to die to that. And Mercy is gonna be, like, very high priority. Hello, my son? Are you coming? No? Okay, fine, be that way. Uh, Mercy's a pretty high priority tire target, so, you know. But he didn't go for us, so that's, you know, you don't get punished, you don't have to learn. So we're ending up in a pretty awkward spot, you know. We can back up easy, but Ryan's decided to go further in. That's entirely his decision to make. We should just leave. We should just back up the door behind us. My son. No, all right, make your mind up, Jesus Christ. We just back up the door behind us because this guy's gonna die. There's nothing we can do for him and I don't want to die with him. Mm, eh, mm, eh. We're le we are leaving. We took the more dangerous route to leave going that way, but we did leave, and that's the important thing. That's the important thing. 
So we got uh, we got a reset now. There's a tracer on their team. This is tremendously inconvenient because she's of course going to be going straight for us. Why wouldn't she be? Great news though. Reaper changed to Farah, so we now have an excellent person to be damage boosting, and we should therefore be keeping track of Farah really closely. This is a very uninspiring Blizzard, isn't it? Just in the middle of the fucking street, a thousand miles away from them, not exactly getting a lot done. So they also don't have anybody currently that is very good at getting people in the air. So being in the air is very exciting right now. At least until they change to a hitscan DPS. We've decided to res the Bridget, which is fair enough, there's cover in the way. We end up getting caught in the grav, you know. I would just Valkyrie immediately, because I want to get out of this situation. Like, I just want to get out of this situation and just ascend. Um, you know, the scary thing there is like, oh, well, here he is. He's finally decided he's going to come up. The scary thing would be, well, what if I use Valkyrie and then just die? Such is life, you know, it happens. We're at full health, we could, and we could just ascend away from all of these people. They don't have people that could continue pressuring us, so I would consider it to be a worthwhile risk in that position. Anyway, the fight's being... They're still winning the fight in our absence, so it doesn't matter what we did. We also have a lot of ultimates built up now as well, so that's nice. So their Junkrat just changed to McCree. That means we now have to adjust how we play when we're using Valkyrie, because now, if he's got Deadeye and we're just floating out in open space, we're going to get got by Deadeye. So we have to worry about cover even while we're using Valkyrie now. Um, being in the sky is also less uh, appealing now because of McCree, but they only have the one hit scan currently, so it's not super scary still. So they're deciding to commit a lot of their ultimates to this fight, even though they just lost to this checkpoint, which is fantastic news for us. Um, Farah started barraging in an interesting position. Um, you know, it wasn't massively impactful, but hey, she sure did use it. So, uh, they're not changing who they are. Just no, no, the thing to be watching for now, when they're res uh, resetting, because we have a far a far prompts is very specific reaction from people, right? Every time the Tracer dies, just like, and I don't know if we did or not, but I, I was, I'm assuming, right? But every time Tracer dies, when she's respawning, just like push tab, see if she changes to another hit scan DPS, because so, she might. And also, when Zarya dies, see if she changed to, changes to D.Va, because she also might do that to try and counter Farah. Because it's just good to know that these things are happening ahead of time, right? Like, it's better to know that there's going to be another hit scan DPS before you start going into the sky with Farah. We could be damage boosting Farah this whole time. She's got armor right now, like, you know. Nobody's here to shoot, but like, you know, we should still be damage boosting her anyway. Um... Or were we damage boosting her? Because our, our colors are the same, actually, aren't they? No, no, we did start healing. Then we started damage boosting her. Okay, we just saw the health bar going down, probably. Both the colors on the healing and the damage boost are the same, which is, uh, you know, upsetting to me personally. But it's not the first time colors ever fucked me before, so I'm used to it. So we're using Valkyrie, we do have to worry about cover, they have McCree, he's, you know, close to having Deadeye, we can see. I just assume he has it if I haven't seen it recently. Uh, Reinhardt, you know, Reinhardt did bad, uh, so he's dead now. We want to try and res it. He's not, he didn't die in a realistic place to res, he died so far forward it's not even worth thinking about. Yep, give him the spin. Oh, ah, uh, mm, yeah, mm-hmm. So, by this point, like, you know, give him the spin. That's good to do when you're resin people. Three people are already dead by this point, though, so this res is very unlikely to work, because even if we res the person, we're still down in this fight. Um, we did have a fair few ultimates still to go, so, you know, it, it wasn't completely untenable necessarily, but I would rather just not res anybody at that point. Um... Yeah, so they have, uh, their grav is built up. Now, we haven't seen Zarya use grav in a while. When we're replaying Mercy, we do have the benefit that we get to stand fairly far back compared to the rest of our teammates, so we can try and dodge the graviton um, as well, because we haven't seen it in a while at this point. Because um, we can just stand quite far back, and if we have to reposition, we got GA. We can reposition nice and fast. We want to try and keep a bit of distance from them. Zarya is dead right now, so we don't actually have to worry about it anymore currently. 
So we have to worry about that. We also have to worry about um, Dead Eye. He's using Dead Eye. He's dead. Don't have to worry about Dead Eye anymore. Do still have to worry about Grav. Zarya is going to be coming back soon. If we have Farah, that makes it nice and easy to try and avoid Grav as well, because we can just be in the sky, where of course we're not likely to get got by Grav. Um, I just, like, so, I understand, you know, we're sticking with these people to damage boost them. I just want to go with Farah right now, because I don't want to be, like, Farah is better to damage boost, and I don't want to be on the ground with all these scary people. Um, even if people get, like, hurt over by the payload, they're getting healed by Bridget and they're on the payload, so we don't have to worry about it hugely. Tracer is trying quite hard to get us right now. Super jump up, we got Farah with us, we can hang out up here away. Uh, again, I'd rather just keep damage boosting Farah right now. Reinhardt, he's hurt, but he's not massively hurt. He's getting healed by Bridget, and he's right next to the payload as well, so he's gonna be fine. He's also next to really low damaging people. We don't need to heal him right now. We could be damage boosting somebody else to try and make sure we win this fight instead. Could be healing, damage boosting right now. We haven't been healing Roadhog this entire time. I also don't want to come down here either. Like, we can just hang out up here and come down if we have to, because I don't want to be next to all these people. They have to touch the payload right now, so they're less likely to follow us up that staircase to try and get us, because they have to keep touching. We can see our people are touching, and if they decide to stop touching, we can jump down to touch it instead, right? We don't have to go down here immediately. And if we're not down here, hey, we can't get hit by that pulse bomb, because we're just up on the staircase. Um, now both the healers are dead, Reinhardt's gonna die. Now conveniently, May and Roadhog are still alive. They are most likely to survive without us, so hopefully they can um, keep it going while we get back. Um, we're also gonna want to pop Valkyrie as soon as we get like pretty close. Basically, as soon as we get through the door, I'm just gonna pop Valkyrie and like fly straight over. Yep, yeah, and that's exactly what we do. Um, they're still fine down there. Again, they're less important to me right now because Roadhog, just in general, lower priority. He's next to the payload. Nobody's on him. He's fine. I don't want to detether from uh, Farah right now because she's in way higher risk than Roadhog is in that position. It's okay. We can res her. We hit him with the spin. Makes it harder to die. We don't really have to worry about Deadeye right now. We saw him use it not that long ago, so it's pretty safe unless he's like been doing a great, real good job. Um, so again, we're winning the fight right now. I really want to make sure we actually continue winning this fight. So I don't want to heal somebody unless they're at significant risk. Reinhardt, again, he's going to be getting healed by Bridget. He's still close to the payload. He's going to be fighting Zarya, who is low energy currently. I'd rather be damage boosting somebody. Doesn't really matter. We could damage boost Reinhardt if we want, since he's going on Farah. Or on Farah, on Zarya right now. Either way, he doesn't need healing, and I'm trying to make sure we win this fight right now. So I don't want to be healing unless the guy is actually in significant risk. I'm trying to make sure we push through and win this fight. Um, just damage boost this guy. You try and get, you know, he's using his ultimate, so he's a good target as well. Again, we don't have to touch the point right now either. We could just continue to hang out on that staircase by the side and tether to people from up there. If it looks like they're going to step off of the payload in C9, we can come down to it. We don't have to just assume they're going to C9 when there's this many people touching it. If there's only one or two touching it, all right, it's a little scarier, but our whole team is here right now. We could keep further away and stay safer than this. Um, and, you know, we're slowly, I get damage boost, just damage boost. We could be damage boosting right now regardless, but again, we're just trying to push through to this last part. Um, bear in mind, like, you know, when you're, you don't always have to have somebody at full health depending on what's going on, you know, like, if you're in the middle of a fight and the guy is in pretty low risk of taking damage or he's just got a lot of health or it looks like other people are gonna heal him, you know, just keep damage boosting, because if the person can- if we can kill more people during the fight, that's better. Um, we've accidentally decoupled, there we go, we're back on ourselves again. Um, Reinhardt's not super exciting to be damage boosting, I would rather be up with Farah right now. Farah's also really low, she's hiding back here, good job Farah, not just floating up in the sky to die. Ryan died. He's died in an okay. No, no, don't do that when they're right there, though. Oh my god, that's a very fucking severe reaction, isn't it? Jesus Christ. It wasn't that serious. 
So he died in, like, not a terrible place. It wasn't unimaginable we would be in a position to res him, but it's definitely not time right now. They're still way too close. He can just walk right up to us and start smacking us again. Now, the good thing is that we got Zarya to waste Graviton. So, hey, that's sick, right? Like, she was just like, gotta stop this res. Pfft. It didn't stop the res, though, so, you know. Now, we're very close, so us dying like this isn't that bad, because we can just get back to the fight immediately. Um, at this point, we have to worry about Reaper having dead eye. Uh, Reaper having dead eye, Jesus fucking Christ. I wonder if that would make Reaper scarier. That would probably be better. That w For Reaper, that would probably be better net than him having Death Blossom, but, uh, you know. He doesn't have that. We have to worry about McCree using dead eye. Um, so... Even if we're not using Valkyrie, Farah has been floating out in open space a little bit, so that makes it a little bit spooky. We can still do what we can to hover around uh, cover, though. It's something we have to bear in mind. Uh, at this point, we also haven't seen Earth Shatter in quite a while either. We can also see he has it, so, you know, I get to say he has it, but he hasn't used it in a while. So we can also say we have to worry about Earth Shatter. And again, we're playing Mercy, so we do have the luxury of being able to stand further back than most people would. He just wasted his Earth Shatter. Well, he didn't waste it, but he had it blocked. Ooh, fuck. He was in an unusual position, I'll give you that. Um, we noticed late. I think it also would have been better if we went to the right side right here. Yeah, we're way closer to the right side of the door than the left side of the door, but I mean, you know, life is hard. We'll not worry about it too much. He was dead-eyeing in a fairly unusual position. I wasn't expecting him to be there when I heard it. Um, Tracer has finally changed to Ash also, so they do now have another hit scan. But it is so late in the game that we don't really have to give it, or so late in the round at least, that we don't have to worry about it. Alright, we got it to the end. Great. Now, of it is worth uh, noting... Okay, we don't have the far. I was going to say, it was worth noting they ended that round. Oh, God, I pushed zero on the fucking numpad. They ended that round with two hit scan DPS, so it is very easy to imagine they would carry that through to the next round, expecting the far to stay on, since they were far for so long. But we don't have to worry about it, because we don't have far anymore. So, we've got Bastion Reap, uh, McCree. About to call him Reaper again. Our team is way too fucking far up. But we don't get to decide on uh, what our team is doing, and unfortunately, we're gonna have to come and do stuff with them. Unfortunately. If your team's doing dumb shit, you gotta go do the dumb shit with them, because otherwise they're just doing dumb shit 5v6. Um, Reinhardt, like, doubled down on the stupid shit he was doing, so hey, you know, that's exciting. I'm looking at the wrong fucking team. Uh, we do not have Bastion, they have Bastion, we have Mei and Soldier. I didn't piece this together, even though I was looking at our Mei doing stuff for a while. No, but it's, it's over there, we're the team too. So we have Soldier. Soldier's a really good damage boost target. Um, Mei, you know, still decent enough, but uh, hey, you know, our team was doing some dumb shit. There's only so much we can do to stop, to help them with this dumb shit situation. Um, that's a position where we get to go, wasn't my fault. <laughs> Alright, like, there's only so much you can do as Mercy when your teammates are doing stuff like that. So Soldier just changed to, uh, Farah so we can hang out with them again. We do still have to worry about the McCree situation, but Bastion we don't really have to worry about. Don't come out here yet, don't, don't bother. Uh, it, it's gone. Uh, very interesting how this boy has decided to stay on Winston. Even though, you know, there's a Bastion over there, and a McCree as well for that matter. You know, I'm not really sure what value Winston's expecting to get in this game, but by God, he sure is hoping he gets something, isn't he? So, uh, we've almost got Valkyrie. We've lost this checkpoint, though, so we don't want to use it during this fight. Um, even if our team commits to this fight right here, I don't want to use Valkyrie. Um, we're going to use it anyway. I'm not really bothered about it, I would just prefer not to in this situation, because, like, we're fighting over ground that we will lose regardless. Um, not 100%, but pretty likely. I respect that choice. Um, so I'd rather not use Valkyrie in this position, just because I'm expecting to lose this ground anyway. But I'm also not gonna be upset if your team commits to a team fight and then you use your ultimate after they committed to that team fight. This is a fair response to have, it's just I'm a selfish boy. Um, 
You know, we're trying our best, but there's only so much we can do to help them in this situation as mercy. And uh, this, uh, you know, this is uh, getting worse by the second, in fact, isn't it? Yeah, you know, like, there's, yeah, we did everything we could. Yep, that was not a good time to use Barrage either. <sighs> McCree's using Deadeye, at least, um, when he didn't need to. There's nothing you do about that situation as Mercy. There's simply no option that you have available to change that option, to change what happened right there. You know, that's gonna be the thing sometimes when you're playing Mercy. You can make a good team excellent, but you can only make a, you know, a bad team average, right? This is very brave. I respect it. Um, I wouldn't have done it, but I respect the bravery to come out here and touch it. I wouldn't do it because, like, we still have so much ground ahead of us that I don't want to come out here and try to die, to die on it, basically. Um, if somebody else goes out here and touches it, I'll follow them, but I'm not going to go out here first myself. Again, I'm a selfish boy, though. So we're actually starting to push them back. Uh, they're actually going to lose this team fight at this point. So, fantastic news. Far changed the Junkrat. Junkrat is still a good person to be damage boosting. This hasn't changed, so, you know, our priority remains the same as far as this goes. Um, Junkrat is better to be damage boosting, um, just like naturally, um, than Mei is because Junkrat's going to be doing a lot of zoning as well. Whereas Mei is, uh, you know, people walk into Junkrat bombs all the time. We seem a little lost and aimless right now. Like, Oh, I just accidentally yanked the fucking arrow key off right there. Hold on, let me put that back on and also click out of the window so that I don't just go back like 20 fucking minutes. It's the kind of professional operation we run around here. All right, so we seem a little lost and aimless right now. Uh, this is mostly evidenced by the fact we just kind of stand in the middle of this and like, hmm, hmm, I don't know. Just go hang out with Junkrat, like, Junkrat's in a good position right now, nice and safe, out of the way, and Junkrat's a good person to be damage boosting. Now, he's getting shot up by their Junkrat, but we can just stand back, right? Like, we can just stand further away and not have to worry about this. He's just the best one to be damage boosting naturally, because he's going to be hitting people while they come through. And if you're damage boosting Junkrat, sometimes he just kills people coming through. And he's in a position where we can easily go to anybody if they end up being in trouble. Like, we don't have to hang out down here. Uh, we're just trying to stay alive as much as we can. So, like, if Junk anything, like, Junkrat dies up there, you know, we can just skedaddle and leave quite easily as, um, Mercy. Especially if he's in, like, a high ground position like that, where he is usually quite easy to see people and get away. Uh, we have also been doing a fair bit of healing people at full health during this game. I haven't pointed out every instance of it, but I've seen it. We've been doing it. Um... It's not been, like, as bad as uh, a lot of Mercy players, but yeah, we don't want to be damage. We don't want to be healing people who are at full health. We want to be damage boosting them. So we've almost got Valkyrie built up. This fight's uh, getting a little scary at this point. We use Valkyrie. Hopefully Ryan lives. Bastion is shooting at us, so we gotta try and hide right now. Fortunately, we're very small, so it's actually quite hard for him to kill us uh, while we're using Valkyrie. But uh, nonetheless, it is still scary, but he didn't get us. Fuck Bastion. Uh, oh no, don't even try. He's so far in. Yeah, now we end up in like an awkward position. All right, we didn't die. That's the important thing. That's, but like, imagine a position where somebody scarier is stood over there. We die for doing that. It wasn't worth the risk. Um, now, we, fortunately, somebody was up there. So we, oh God, don't jump down though. Okay, all right. Good patience, good patience. All right, good, good. We didn't panic and just immediately try to get back through again. This is unfortunate. Yeah, that, you know, we started GA, 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 started GAing to somebody, right, as the Graviton appeared, so, you know, life is hard, life is hard, it's okay. Um, we got way more time out of that checkpoint than we really deserve to have, so I'm not too upset about it, Bridget's gonna go in and commit to this, probably, no, she's thought better of it, okay. A uh, surprising amount of self-restraint from a Silver Bridget player, or from a Bridget player in general, to be honest with you. Good job, Bridget. Um, our team are still doing some dumb shit, which of course we have no control over, and we kind of have to come and do it with them, because otherwise they're just doing dumb shit for v or, uh, 5v6, you know, life is hard. Um, Bridget at least died in a very convenient position, so we were able to res her, now she's going to use her ultimate as well. Can't res May, unfortunately, you know. 
whatever. She shouldn't have been so bad, and then she wouldn't need to be rezzed, would she? So Bastion just used Configuration Tank. We gotta be real careful about going out anywhere right now. Okay, he's right there, but that's okay. He didn't see us. Ooh, okay, he's, he's done being a tank now. That's good. Man, I wish Configuration Tank had, like, a clearer noise for when it's over. You know, it's a very scary ultimate. We ended up in a pretty awkward position right here, where Moira has come in for us, and it's quite hard to avoid Moira as a uh, mercy, and then, you know, other shit's happening as well. Like, everything that ha like, you know, like, this is all a result of the dumb shit our team was doing, which Reinhardt is still doing. To this day, he's still doing his dumb shit. You know... When your team is doing some dumb shit, you gotta go and do it with them, but this also is gonna naturally lead to positions where you kinda get fucked as a result of that. Life is hard sometimes. So, uh... I don't wanna use Valkyrie right now, so few of our team are out here to actually take part in this fight. Um, we're base. oh, we're, we're going in. Oh, I respect this. I respect that play. Are we gonna get him as well? He's panicking. He doesn't know what to do. We got him. We got him. We got him. Bastion's going to be tilted for the rest of the night now, so that was definitely worth it, even if we lose the game. I don't care if we lost the team fight as a result of what we did. We aren't losing a team fight. We aren't losing this team fight as a result of what we did, by the way. <laughs> right? This this happened regardless of what we did right there. But even if what we did right there directly led to us losing the game, it would have still been worth it. Because Bastion's gonna carry that one with him for the rest of the night now. He's It was absolutely worth it, even if we lost the game as a result. We didn't. But even if we did, it would have still been worth it. So we got Sombra now, which is uh, way less exciting to damage boost than uh, Junkrat is. You also definitely can't trust a, a Sombra player. <laughs> like, you def don't follow a Sombra's mercy unless you want to get left behind immediately. So, uh... It kind of didn't matter who we decided to res right there. I would have gone for the res on Ryan as well. Um, you know, it was pretty much the best play we had, really, at that point. Outside of just, like, pocket May and hope for the best, I would have res the Ryan as well. And then we end up winning, so it's all good. Um, so, let, uh, let me just check the email real quickly, because I kind of feel like I'm forgetting something. Nope, that was for the Blizzard World game. Uh, yeah, and I already talked about the other the other thing that was in the email in the last video from this person. So, yes, there we go. So, uh... Can't really think of a thing that stood out the most in that game. I guess just, like, be damage-boosting people more, you know? Just, like, as a broad thing. Though the reasons for it varied a couple of times. Uh, where it was just, like, that guy's not hurt enough that I'd worry about it. And other times, like, well, we could just go hang out with Jot, like, Junkrat right now, but we're deciding to stay, like, in the middle of the area near the payload. Like, you yeah, don't have to worry about it. Like, you don't have to go touch the payload as that early as Mercy as well, just generally. But, um... Uh... Yeah, I guess just damage boost people more was stood out the most, though the reasons for it vary to points. Um, so, yeah. So there you go. So thank you very much for watching. If you did, if you have any questions, feel free to ask someone and happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just ship post with us. I've started streaming on Twitch Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, 8 p.m. EST to 11 EST. There's a link to the channel in the description. And if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.